Let's go to breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Many thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, we have Chris Wandu who joins the conversation. Uh, he's of the African Leadership uh, Development Initiative, if I'm not mistaken. He's the executive director. Chris Wandu, it's good to have you join us. Thank you very much, Bob. You have to, we have to find Messi. We have to find her. <laughs> we have to find her. All right, then that's, that's okay. Thank you. But maybe that's because you've not, we've not watched this, uh, this position. Uh, maybe if you do that, she remember easily. <laughs> Once you bring the soap, go wash them. I, I get what I <laughs> All right. All right, so. Chris. Let's get straight to it. Now, we have the leadership newspaper with us, and then I'll just go straight to uh, the top stories on the front pages. PDP crisis deepens. IU calls Wiki's bluff and says he has four year tenor. Uh, that's uh, what you find this morning on the leadership. Underneath, uh, the rider talks about denied submitting resignation letter to David Mack. Party leaders meet on Atiku and Wiki reconciliation Friday. I mean, Friday is such a good day. National Economy Goals Weekly, uh, August 29th. Uh, National Economy Goals Weekly, August 29th. I'm sure you want to, um, you know, read all of that. Darkness looms as electricity workers and back and strike tomorrow. Hmm. Okay. And uh, you find another caption on the leadership. It talks about Ruto wins Kenya's presidential election, vows to work with all leaders. Uh, some persons have said that, you know, that election in Kenya was free and fair. It's really great. Uh, but that's it. And quickly, you have another caption. Monkeypox, Nigeria caught 60 new cases in 19 state. Interest rate hike likely as Nigeria's inflation hits 19.64%. Should we be worried? There's another question. And the NASENI deploys technologies to train three 1,700 youths and mountain farming. It's such a welcome development. Some people would say, but that's the much we can take this morning on the leadership newspaper. The next is the nation. Uh, we have the big story there. Are you to wiki others? I have no plan to quit PDP chair now. I think uh, that was just contained in the festival uh, we have put out today. Uh, are you to wiki others? I have no plan to quit PDP chair. Now, I wonder if we expected anything else other than that. The rather to that, I was elected for four years. Absence of Atiku's men stalls peace parley. More from the nation. NCDC confirms 15 monkeypox cases. Electricity workers set to battle TCN, that's a transmission company of Nigeria. Oshun Osiek, chairman, alleges threat to life. Uh, commercial activities pick up in Southeast. Police arrest a man over alleged kidnap threat on Oyo Vasti students. 19.64% inflation rate, highest ever in 17 years. NBS Niger Bureau of Statistics saying that. A rate jumps by 1.82% in one month. World Bank XLCC chief worried. Uh, indeed, it's a humor, very large amount. 19.64. Amazing. More from the nation, federal government not sincere about ending ASU strike, says ASU. Uh, union meets education minister, others today. I think you can remember the president mandated the education minister to lead the negotiations. Yobin North senatorial ticket, court adjourns Machina's suit against Lawan. So that is still on. Um, and thanks to the nation for keeping us, so bringing us up to speed with what's been uh, going on there. We'll see how that pans out. Those are the headlines on the front page of The Nation. Away from The Nation, we have the Punch newspaper this morning. I mean, the issue of the economy might just be dominating the papers this, uh, today. And so 19.6% inflation rate. Federal government wants against acute hunger, zero loan crisis. Well, inflation hit 17-year-old time high. Nigerians to pay more for consumables. Nigerian going Zimbabwean way. Nobody's doing anything, DG NACC is quoted to say. And politicians concerned about 2023 elections, not dying economy. This is what expert and the CSOs are saying. Well, is this really true? And power intervention fund jumps to 2.9 trillion naira. That fuel subsidy hits 1.593 trillion naira. Refinery rehabilitation gobs 54 billion naira. And Lassa fever, 165 killed. Awareness called uh, is on the high. 
federal government asked to meet today and strike enters 183 days. I mean, who would think that ASU would, you know, be this uh, very consistent. Running mate, Wiki accuses Rivers elders of gang up, and that's what you find. And just before we move away from the punch, another talks about a motorcycle trains on door recruits and vows to tackle criminals. Again, police kill five kidnappers, abduct redeemers, students escape, escapes. I checked out again, police kill five kidnappers, abducted redeemers, student escapes. Man dies in motel after meeting online lover. Uh, that's what you find. I mean, that story has been dominating some of the pages. And killings of innocent Nigerians of Penny Ferry tells Buhari. These are the headlines you find this morning on the Punch newspaper. All right, let's move on to the next one. Of course, um, we are almost done. Uh, but Messi, it's quite interesting the, uh, the slant the papers are using or going this morning uh, with the punch going uh, business. We have uh, Daily Trust also going business as well. Um, the big one on the front page of the Daily Trust, energy food prices push inflation to 17-year high. Energy food prices push inflation to 17-year high. Uh, it's the big one on the front page of the Daily Trust. Uh, more from that paper. Why we pioneered non-interest banking, Jai's bank chairman, uh, Kenyan Paul, protests jubilation trail, Ruto's victory. My only agenda is to save Nigerians, Atika Obukar. I'm sure we didn't expect him to say any other thing than that. Um, talking about the Kenyan elections, it was interesting to see uh, the colorful nature of some of the candidates, especially George Wajakoya, whom some people have uh, called uh, the Peter of Kenyan politics. But yesterday I asked a few persons whether they agreed because he had 0.44%, even though it was popular on Twitter. And people said, no, they are two different candidates with two different uh, uh, backgrounds and dynamics. Well, let's bring in um, uh, uh, Chris Kendi Wando at this point. And we'll start with uh, the daily trust that we have in front of us because it goes the same way um, uh, some other papers like uh, The Nation went. We're looking at the NBS and inflation rates received, even the punch also went that way. Um, what are your thoughts on this 17-year high, uh, um, you know, price of food as inflation has uh, pushed it to 19.64%? Quite worrying, you would say. Chris, can you wonder? Quite worrying, as, it's, uh, as you said, but um, it's, um, it's not surprising. Uh, uh, in fact, I was expecting it to be higher than that because um, anyone uh, that lives in Nigeria or lives in the country currently will know that the prices of goods and services have um, hit the roof. It has not only hit the roof, it has gone beyond the roof uh, because when it hits the roof, there is a possibility that you can use something to, to bring it down. But this one has gone up the roof and uh, there is nothing anybody can do about it. And it's due to several factors. Um, if you've been to the market and uh, uh, or you have uh, a wife or people like Messi who go to the market every uh, weekend, <laughs> Messi has not been complaining. No. Maybe she doesn't go to the no, market. No, no, she's no. not been complaining. No. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. She doesn't complain. <laughs> she doesn't complain. Like she's always, always. Oh wow! I, I yes. mean, really? I mean, okay. Yes. I'm, I'm I sure that Messi go to the market. I, I don't, don't even go to the market. I mean, I, I don't remember okay. the last time I went to the market. Okay. She doesn't complain. Okay. Never. Never. Okay. Uh, so. Okay. Like Messi, I go to the supermarket. Okay. <laughs> 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 you, you realize that the prices of goods and services are really, uh, really so high. And uh, especially stable food, like your normal beans, your rice, your yam, curry, even the curry that we produce here, yam that we produce here, and every other thing. And I'll just tell you somebody, some days back that I can't remember when last I bought a sardine. If you remember that very stable food that we used to eat in, in secondary school and university in those days, I just buy bread and just buy a gigi bread and just quickly buy sardine. If you know how much a tin of sardine goes now, you'll be shocked. And, so, and that, has, that is the problem we're having. And relative to the income of Nigerians, nothing to have right home about. Those, the minimum wage is not being paid by several states. You saw a, a, a survey that was published a few days ago, and how many states that are owing salaries, some two, some three, some as much as six, six months, and thereabouts. It was so shocking. Uh, and so 
you, you can see that the situation of Pesa. And apart from that, we have another problem we are having is the issue of insecurity. The insecurity in the land is making it impossible for farmers to go to the farm and be able to produce uh, uh, food. And that in itself is adding up to the pressure. And so if we're talking about 70 year high, uh, it is not surprising to me. And if nothing is done, it could get worse. But the issue now is that Nigerians are their needs. Nigerians are going to bed hungry. Gone are the days where you used to have, um, uh, you say, 101 or uh, 0, uh, 0, 011. Now it's even at times 000. zero, zero. Some people go to bed a whole day without having anything to eat. And a, a hungry man is an angry man. Um, I, I hope that the federal government are reading these statistics and doing something about it. The uh, coming around to tell us that, oh, things are better uh, compared to what it was in 2015, we no longer hold uh, water because Nigerians are really, really suffering. And that, to me, is a troublesome uh, development. But, but let's stay on this one. I mean, the punch captions it, uh, you know, federal government once again uh, acute hunger, a zero loan crisis. I'd I like us to see what's the correlation between the crisis in Sierra Leone and, you know, the hunger that we're experiencing or we will experience. Do you think there's a connection? Well, well uh, it's not that there is a connection. What, uh, what, uh, what uh, if, uh, if I read them right, what they are saying is that, they are, you know, there's a riot going on in Sierra Leone currently mm -hmm. because of food crisis. So what the warning coming here is that if we don't do something about it, there will be a situation where Nigerians might just try to take to the streets. Um, Kofi may say there are instances where people have rioted over just bread, the, the price of bread, and that in itself have brought down a government. It is that bad. And if you look at it now, um, just as I said, that Messi goes to supermarket, a, an average loaf of bread, the main loaf of bread goes to about 1,000 naira now. Aggregate bread, you cannot get an aggregate bread for it less than 150 i say the smallest one 200 300 that is how uh, how expensive the stable those stable food is now so uh, in 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 Sierra Leone, there was serious protest and rioting uh, for some days and so many people were killed in the streets of uh, freetown and so many other cities and it took the collective effort of the security agencies to be able to bring this uh, down but that is just like sitting on a, 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 a gunpowder and it could explode any other time. Because if people are not getting um, what they can eat, then what is the life all about? And um, I don't think we need to get to that point where we'll be going on the street protesting. That will only best add fuel to the already insecurity situation we find ourselves in Nigeria. And that is not good enough. All right. Let, let, let's go over to the punch newspaper we stay with the punch newspaper and we can see on the front page there uh, the top right corner uh, or top left corner whichever way you look at it uh fg asu meet today to strike a strike enters 130 days another paper says the asu uh, will be meeting with the minister of education i'm sure if we read details of the the punch story we'll see that that is the case uh with president buhari having mandated the Minister of Education to lead the negotiations. Um, with this development, do you expect anything uh, significantly different to come out of ASU's meeting with the uh, minister? I want to be optimistic that something um, good and fruitful will come out of it. But the other side of me, uh, I know that uh, it's, it's, it's near, near impossible uh, for anything which come out. Um, if you, if you, like yesterday, the Minister of Labor State was blaming the PDP for the current ASU strike. Yes, Festus Kiyamu was on the, the TV station uh, run by a, a, a newspaper, and uh, he was saying that he blamed the PDP. It was the PDP that caused the strike. They are the one that signed an agreement, uh, and that is why we are we, we are today. It's the same person that came out and said parents should go and beg us to resume that we cannot find uh, money to pay them. And those kind of language and those kind of um, statement does not help matters at all. If you are going into negotiation, I expect you to be as humble as possible and bring all the cards to the table so that you dissect and look at. But when you come up with inflammatory um, 
um, statement, and you are also a part of the negotiation thing, then it becomes a problem. Because if that statement is coming from any other minister, well, I can just overlook it. But coming from a minister of state for labor, who's supposed to be part of the negotiating team, then that means you have already taken a position. And whatever you bring to the table, people may not want to listen to you. So um, you should be able to, uh, I, I expect a, a somebody like uh, in the person of uh, Mr. Professor Tiamo to probably, uh, I would rather say that you should just focus on being the spokesman of the APC presidential candidate rather than also be the spokesman of the government when it comes to issues like this. Those that should be the spokesperson should be allowed to talk and not somebody like Professor Tiamo who already seems to be playing politics with him. But as I said, let me try to be optimistic and believe that the outcome of the meeting today will be acceptable but it's a long way to go, and um, I don't know how we can be able to get it. But at a, at a point, I thought that something will give. Also, we'll be able to calm down a bit, and uh, I want them to come to a certain thing. And I think and they should be able to call up the strike and let, let the students return back to, uh, to school. It's becoming so, so traumatic for parents who have their children in the schools. All right. Right, Chris, let's also look at uh, the leadership now and away from the punch. It talks about the PDP crisis that has deepened. And the PDP is an opposition. Uh, one would expect that they probably would have had their acts together as an opposition even prior to an election year. Now, um, Ayu calls Wiki's bluff, says he has a four-year tenure. Apparently, you know, Wiki had said that for the peace to actually, or peace talk to continue between Atiku and himself, uh, the chairman has to resign. And he's saying that it's not going to, you know, do that. that. That doesn't look like he's going to resign anytime soon. But what do you make of all of this crisis in the PDP and the current situation uh, with uh, the chairman and Wiki? What we have, uh, as in our message, what we, in law we call morality and law. Um, morality is different from law. Law is different from morality. Um, legally, um, Ayu is right. He has a four-year tenure as a, he was, because he was elected at a convention and he became the, uh, the national chairman of PDP. But in terms of morality, is it possible for us to have a national chairman from the north, also a presidential candidate from the north? If you understand what I mean. That is the, that, that is the, uh, the, because over the years, right from 1999, and all the political parties, the sort of major political parties, PDP, especially, once the national chairman comes from a particular section of the country, the presidential candidate will not come from that same point. But they find themselves in a position where both the national chairman and also the presidential candidate and, uh, of the party comes from the same place. And I just feel morally, um, it will be good if uh, the, Mr. Senator Ayu uh, step down and probably get to somebody from the southern part of the country to become the chairman of the party, but what you ask yourself, are they, are they going to have a national convention between now and when the election starts in February, which is a bit too short, and if you know what it took them to be able to have that convention? Or could you just um, um, step down and you have an interim chairman from the South. But the question you ask yourself, legally, will an interim chairman be able to lead a big political party like um, the PDP to a national election from 2023? That is the big question. But I hope they'll be able to sort it out. And I don't think, just as I said about the issue of um, uh, Pestos Kiyama, I don't think that people within leadership to be able to be making statement that, well, if, uh, um, Kofi, um, I, I'm, an, I, I'm a chartered arbitrator, and I know that when we go, when you go to arbitration, you don't hold anything. You 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 try to let go so many of your rights as it case may be. You go with an open hand, open open mind, so that at the end of it all, you'll be able to table your issues at, at the table and let it get it sorted. Out. It's going to be a give and take. That is what some arbitration is all about, and I think that is what we could bet. All the uh, second leg to read. Uh, Bessie, you, uh, Governor Wiki uh, has been talking and talking and talking of it that um, I don't even know what is happening. Um, yesterday, he, he, was, uh, he spoke at the birthday um, ceremony of former governor of um, River State, um, Dr. Peter Odile, 
where he was blaming everybody that an elder in um, River State uh, for the, the role they played, probably uh, stopping him from clinching the vice presidential uh, um, uh, ticket of the PDP. He was he that they came to his house, how they go, uh, blah blah blah, and the rest of them. And that for me, I just think that. Um, Governor Wick is speaking too much. He's speaking too much. I believe he should be able to be, let him, you know, when we say look up and ask, make the man calm down, make him calm down. Because it's the same way that told us when he was campaigning that he was not interested. I, he will never go for the vice presidential uh, as a vice president. You remember he said that vividly that he wouldn't go for vice president. But why is he now fighting everybody that he was not picking? But, but you have, you have raised, know. Chris Wendu, you have raised some concerns that he's concerned about. I mean, talking about the fact that you can't have, uh, you know, th there's no chance for the Southern uh, candidate or candidacy, however, if you look at it. You've mentioned that, and that's the cause he's fighting for. Don't you think it's a just cause, the issue of rotation and uh, equity and justice? And I said that you remember what I said about said. I say this is morality and legal. It, it, Legally, it. <laughs> he is there, but he talks in terms of morality. Yes, he's right, and just like so many other other uh, other people are saying within the party. But you can just also talk about the APC. Is the APC not having a Muslim Muslim um, ticket? People have been talking about that, and they are sticking their ground. So it's almost the same. It's almost the same thing. These two parties. Uh, seems to be running against the tide, and uh, which is why so many people have been saying that instead of these uh, two 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 parties that uh, seems not to uh, that seem to, to be taking us for granted, why don't you look for alternative? Why don't you look for a thought force where you can we can have opportunity of looking at other candidates rather than from rather than what we have in PDP. The PDP ruled off for how many years? About fifteen years or seventeen years or thereabout. APC have ruled off for about seven years, and there's not things are getting worse. Why don't you look for alternative? I'm not mentioning anybody, but your yeah. guess is as good as mine. Yeah. Let us try as much as possible. Chris Kerr, well, because, of, because of time, let's quickly move on to another one. Um, interesting one there with the PDP and uh, you know what's happening with uh, Wiki and Atiku. But uh, the, the, the nation has some, I think this is good news for, for Nigerians and then for those in the Southeast. And the headline on the front page of the Nation newspaper, one of the headlines there says, like we said earlier, commercial activities pick up uh, in the Southeast as Monday sit at home wanes. Now, this is what the paper is saying in that story. Monday business activities are gradually picking up in many parts of the Southeast as more residents uh, came out yesterday. The paper says there had been f fear of attacks despite the indigenous people of Biafra calling off its sit at home. Uh, the exercise was introduced uh, uh, to protest the detention of IPOB leader, and we all know what that happened there. So this is what they're saying, um, that it's, it's, they, they went to Abia State, they looked at Umia, Umia here, the Abia State capital, and about the commercial capital, you know, smaller markets were open. They went to Anambra State, commercial activities, they say, are gradually returning, and Boeing State, and, and so on and so forth. So uh, this is good news, isn't it? And what, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, it's good news, and that's what we have been preaching for a long time, that uh, we need to open up. Uh, those of us from the Southeast are not happy with what is going on, and economic activities in the Southeast practically coming to the halt, and it's, been, uh, it's getting hot on a daily basis. And um, you mentioned Omar here. I'm from Imo State. But my village is less than um, 10 minutes drive from Umar here and um, in Abia State. So uh, if things are picking up in Omar here, all well and good. Um, but I spoke with my uncle uh, yesterday, and uh, he told me that um, the, the, the sit at home is still being observed um, within the village and the surrounding local government. But uh, if the report is coming from uh, um, the nation is anything to go by, then it's good. And that is, can also be related to one thing. And, but, I may be wrong, but you could see that also the agitation, the IPOP agitation seems to have come down a bit. And uh, the agitation within the South is, has gone down a bit. And what I personally would attribute to that is that the, the situation of what we are seeing now politically, where it seems that the attention of um, the, young, the younger generation within the South is, uh, seems to be shifting away from IPO to being obedient. You can see the mass uh, support that they are giving the candidate of the Labour Party, P2B. If you go to the, the Southeast and see the frenzy, that means that they are already 
queuing in into the 2023 election and probably feel that this is their best chance to um, have a shot at the presidency. So that has shifted the attention of most of the young people within the Southeast just a few days ago. I think it was Saturday or Friday, I can't remember now. Um, P2B was in Owele to open a, 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 his office in Owele, and you could see the mammal crowd. Uh, it's not only in the South, even in the South South, you saw the, the crowd in Calabar and some other places. But in essence, what I'm saying, I'm, I'm thinking, and in my own personal opinion, I may be wrong, is that uh, people within the South, it seems, to seem, it seems to believe that they have a little uh, sense of belonging now, politically, unlike what it used to be. And that in, uh, uh, is shifting the attention for the agitation for IPO, Biafra, and the rest of them to channel their effort and making sure that probably uh, this is the time for them to be able to hit the presidency in coming 2023. And that itself um, could be simple. I was on um, um, about, uh, what was it, about um, about four or five days ago, or six days, sometime um, on Thursday or Friday, I was at a forum addressed by the governor of, um, of Anambra State, Charles Trudeau, here in, in, in Lagos. And I heard what he said the state is doing to be able to need the high level of insecurity in the state. And they realize so many statistics. You can see that attacks in even Anambra State, which used to be a, a, a hotbed, Anambra and Demo State, which used to be a hotbed of uh, attacks in the past few weeks, has really come down. And I hope that this will be sustained in the days to come. Hmm. Are, are, you, are, you, are you joining those who are saying that, oh, uh, IFUB supporters are, are part of those who are um, you know, being tagged obedience? Yeah, uh, because that's generating some 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 reaction. Uh, Chris, Wando, are you sure you want to go there? No, no, no. I'm not saying they are. I, 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 I'm speaking as an Igbo man. I'm speaking as somebody from the status. I don't belong to IPO. I don't belong to any political party. I've never registered for any political party um, since they started in 1999. The best I've done is every time that the election I come down and cast my vote. But I, I'm telling you that the situation seems to be. It has come down. It's not. Agitation is not about IPOB in the South East, and that is the mistake some people are making. Every single person in the South East, I would tell you that close to 90% 90, 90 of South, uh, South, uh, South Easterners believe on the need that there has been a lot of marginalization and that the South East is not getting their face. It doesn't have to be, be you have to, don't have to be a member of IPOB to know that. As, I, as somebody who is highly educated to a large extent, I know that this agitation has been there for long, and this perception that uh, the Igbos have been alienated to a large extent in the in the scheme of things. So it's perception, it's a perception that is spreading across Igbo land, south, uh, south east. So it's not whether I've been iPod or no iPod. No, 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 it has nothing to do with that. But I'm telling you that there's serious agitation. And the earlier we believe that there is something that is agitation and people are agitating to better for us. But how do we come back? The, 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 the style might not be, might differ. I am not for this kind of um, going around attacks and being done by certain individuals. It has gone beyond IPO. We certainly remember that of late, some individuals have been arrested who are taking advantage of the situation to cause havoc in the statues. And when they are profiled, they are member, member members of IPO. They are just criminals. There's a, a, a difference between being a criminal, criminality, and agitation. Those are two different things. And the security agencies should be able to deal with criminals. And those that are also agitating, they, um, there should be a, a kind of um, uh, political um, uh, way to be able to deal with the situation so it's so that you can have a win-win situation. Mm. Let's also, I mean, go back to the leadership newspaper this morning. There's a hint that the nation's electricity supply crisis might just worsen. Uh, that's because you have uh, electricity workers that might just embark on strike tomorrow. And for them, it's because of the career path and, you know, the condition of services for them. Uh, what do you make of the situation? I mean... Wasn't even and like it, 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 it wasn't. It wasn't even it. like you know the the past situation was anything to write them about. So um, uh, you, take it. you took it off my mouth. I was just about asking you. As it goes. <laughs> as it, I mean, so it's, a, 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 it's a, a good. That's a very traumatic, traumatic <laughs> statement from both of you. Anyway, don't take what you don't have now. Have that coffee. Can somebody take what you don't have? <laughs> eh? You can't. Somebody can't take what you have. So, so when you see. Electricity workers are going to say they are going to say, oh, well, I'm good. But situation, but on, a, on a very sincere note, uh, I think um, whatever the agitation should, is, it should be looked into. The fact remains that where we are today is nowhere else we're supposed to be. A country of over close to 200 million, more than 200 million, riding on just about 5,000 megawatts is nothing to write about. South Africa, with less about half our size, 
is running about over 50,000. I was watching um, um, engineer uh, Bart Naji. You remember, you remember him vividly, Bart Naji, the former Minister of Power, speaking on the national TV station yesterday, and he was giving the problem that inherit in the power sector and the activity and some of the things they were putting in place to be able to make sure that on a yearly basis we're able to add about 10,000 megawatts into the grid. But that is neither here nor there. We don't need to. Be, we don't need to go back to Egypt. Let us face uh, the promised land. But, but, <laughs> well, he, but he's doing, he's doing some great work in your, in your home state of Abia. I mean, with uh, the power company over there uh, finally coming yes, on and, board. Yeah, so, yeah. And for me, I'm not from Abia. But sorry. I know that, um, yes, but I know that in Abia, according to what Bart Inaji also said yesterday, which you are right, uh, he said the, the independent power uh, stations are working very well in Abia. And there seems to be a high level of stable electricity in that. Why we are not replicating that across Nigeria is what I, I, I find difficult to believe. But we cannot do that. You know why? Because even what we, are, we cannot transmit what we are generating, there is a level. I learned so much from what you were saying yesterday. There is a level to which the, we can transmit. If we, let me give you just a classical example of what he said. If you generate about 10 megawatts, 10,000 megawatts, and your capacity to transmit is just five. You cannot transmit more than five. That means you're wasting about 10,000, uh, about 5,000 again. That is the situation where, so that the current grids that we have cannot be able to sustain that. We need to upgrade and move to higher grade that has a name and whatever. It's a bet. Part of what a message said, I hope that the legacy, let us speak with them. Bikono, uh, Ejo, uh, Abed, may the no go strike. I, 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 I hate to shock you. Know now. <laughs> I hate to shock both of you. I don't want them to go on strike because I've been having uh, close, close to constant. Having, I've been having, I'm, I'm I've been having almost 24 pass. Uh, 24 Can you tell pa us the location? Supply we, we need to know. In my part of Lagos. I won't tell you. You want them to hear <laughs> it so they put it off. But no, no, no. Messi wants me to say so they'll hear it and then turn it off. Messi, Where? No, no. <laughs> Let me tell you. Coffee is a banana, a banana. No, 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 no. You know, amen, amen. I receive it. Chris Kenuwando, in my part of Lagos, it's been almost 24 hour power supply. We, to the extent that I don't even think of charging my phone when I get home, I can just wake up and charge it anytime. It is uh -huh. un unbelievable. So I don't, I, I, I don't I want them. Coffee, cut me, I, cut soap for me. Cut I won't soap cut. Me, cut soap I, on me. air, no. Because if, if I say it and they hear, you know, no, 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 no. But, I don't but, but, but say Chris, it. I mean, the, your, your thoughts, fantastic points that you have raised in perspective, but I mean, it's contrary to the popular opinion that we have, especially from stakeholders, exactly. every other time, including exactly. the experts. They say that uh, the issue that we have is usually not generation. I've heard a lot of persons who say, um, yeah, exactly. You know, uh, yeah. what we generate, it's, it's, it, it, it's not. It, no, they're saying that because if, we, if we're saying that we have a capacity to generate about 12,000 plus, let's even say 13,000 mm -hmm. megawatts, mm -hmm. but we're not even mm -hmm. generating up to 13,000 megawatts. Uh, we're between, you know, 3,000, 4,000, sometimes maybe 5,000, right? Mm -hmm. But the, the people well, are saying that it, it, it's not the issue of, um, you know, that what we have generated, even the 4,000, that we're not even able to you know, transmit it. And so it's not necessarily the generation issue. And that's really conflicting and very confusing because even at 12,000 capacity, we have over 2 million Nigerians. Uh, megawatts we're talking about now. How can even 12,000 megawatts, you know, um, sustain an economy of over 200 million persons plus, right? Then we're now saying yeah. that it's not the issue of, uh, you know, transmitting it or generation, it's transmission when we are not even generating enough to transmit. So, I mean, where does that even leave us? Yes, quickly, this, let me put in the, the reason why you are having the national grid collapsing is because they are pushing so much into the national grid transmission. And that cannot take it. That's why it collapses. According to you, I, I'm not a, <laughs> I'm a mass communicator. I'm not a, an electrical engineer. Uh, so I can only talk <laughs> from the basis of ignorance. Um, but from what I listen to him, but the fact is that we have to expand. And he said something very key. Let me just tell you this. He said something very key yesterday that we make a very big mistake during the privatization process we had when we privatized the electric sector. Let me tell you what he said. He said the fact it was that those that we sold the discos and dangles or whatever to, they didn't have the financial capacity to be able to handle issues within the, electri uh, the electricity sector. That they, that they were thinking that they were going to get money, they have money, from abroad 
But what they did was to go to Nigerian banks to borrow money to buy this uh, this thing. So you still have money within the system circulated, and that is why they don't have enough to be able to upgrade some of these things. It's a very big. But I'm not surprised because a minister of power was um, a former minister, a former minister, um, the former uh, VC of um, UNA once said that now which they cause our electricity electricity problem. And probably I may just probably be, be, um, agree with him. It's just unfortunate. Interesting uh, situation there. I remember the uh, <laughs> the minister in question who made that statement. I think he was the one yeah. either before or after Bath and Naji, who was also exactly. minister exactly. of power. Yeah, you know, yeah, we there are yeah. certain, a lot of things we hear in in the country these days. Let's let's go back to the Punch newspaper um, because you, you know talking about this this national grid collapse. At some point, the talk by some industry experts was that uh, the 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 reason why that was a so-called national grid collapse was because the there's been a sort of um, uh, we're living in denial. Basically, they said that the, uh, the the power supply in the country was being sustained by um, generating sets that they were pumping diesel into generating sets which they were using to power. The, the country, which was what someone said, and because the price of diesel had gone high, they couldn't uh, power these generating sets anymore, and the companies involved were not being sincere to the federal government, so this thing had just blown up in their face to expose them. You know. And so talking about, about that, we look at the fuel situation in the country. The punch is saying that uh, fuel subsidy is hitting 1.59 trillion naira, uh, and the refinery rehabilitation is gulping 54.66 billion naira. I don't know if it is... Uh, these huge amounts of money make you shake anymore because we hear this almost almost every day. Um, but a bit of, of what the punch is saying, uh, Chris Kennedy wonder, uh, saying latest data on the amount spent on subsidizing premium motor spirit, uh, popularly called petrol, seen in Abuja on Monday, showed that the government subsidized the commodity with 1.593 trillion naira between January and June 2000. And 22 was well, also gathered the paper rights uh, that the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited pumped 54.66 billion naira into refinery rehabilitation during the six month period. I know you are shaking your head somewhere, <laughs> you know. So, they're saying the figures obtained from the NMPCLs, so that's what the company is now known as, uh, uh, presentation to the Federation Accounts Allocation Committee for July 2022 uh, uh, showed that subsidies on petrol were implemented in June. Uh, the company transited from being a public oil firm to a commercial entity last month. Uh, so that, that's what they're saying. They're also saying that it, it also made it clear in July that subsidy on petrol was now a burden of the federal government and not its own responsibility. So NMPC is no longer taking that burden. What the paper is saying is they're making it clear that they're pushing the thing uh, back to the federal government. What, what are your thoughts on this, Chris Kane? Kane it's, a, it's a situation. And you can also talk about this in light of the probe by the House of Reps on the nation's subsidy payment. Um, the, let's, let's talk about the uh, uh, turnaround maintenance. That is the one that is much more uh, peculiar. Uh, and I've been seen for years now. Let's even say in the past seven years. If we do an inventory of how much has been pumped into the turnaround maintenance of our refineries, um, Kofi Messi, you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked that what we have used in trying to uh, turn around these uh, refineries would have helped us in probably building one or two new refineries. And as I'm talking this morning, and I stand to be corrected, none of those refineries is turning out a single liter of petroleum. Not the one in Kaduna, not the one in Wari, not the one in Portacourt. None. We still import about 100% of our petroleum from, um, from different parts of the country. And that is why we are paying a lot of subsidy for, for such. Money that would have gone into other sectors. And if the government had done what they ought to do by building up refineries, they wouldn't have been where we are. But it's so obvious that some people are benefiting from this route. And that is where I come to question the, uh, the uh, agencies like EFCC and ICPC. I don't know what their job is. They don't turn their eyes where they need to investigate. All they are interested now is about Yahoo Yahoo boys and waiting and, and uh, hitting people's houses and searching uh, uh, students on the road and the rest of them. 
That is not their core mandate. I was expecting that we would have looked at it, look at it seven years ago, in the past seven years, how much have we been able to push into turnaround maintenance of these uh, refineries and how have we effectively, effectively utilized it. The National Assembly, we always do their oversight functions over the executive on issues like this. But at the end of it, or whatever report they come out with, you always know that the executive will not implement it. They don't have the power of prosecution. All they do is investigate and pass on to the executive to, to handle the issue. And it ends in somebody's cupboard, lock it up, and they forget it. So I have not seen anything useful coming out of whatever investigation the House of Rep or Senate is going to do on issues like this. But if I remember, if I have my way personally, and I've said it down with my number, we say we are going, we want to regulate, let us remove subsidy. Because there are some people that are benefiting so much from it's just like what is happening in, in the finance sector, where we are talking about city where the Naira, uh, the dollar, the Naira is sliding um, to the dollar. And every day you come to realize that we have a parallel market and you have the official market. If the official market is about 400, you go to the parallel market, it goes to about 700. So on people within this financial system, the banks and CBN are making so much keep from this because they collect this money, these dollars at a very cheap rate and now sell it to the BDCs and also sell to, um, um, uh, what do you call it? All these, uh, I'll call it um, uh, Malam or people that uh, sell uh, dollars to make so much profit. There's so much um, corruption within the system. And that is where we have always said it that the president promised us that he's going to tackle the issue of corruption when he was coming in 2015. But in now, things are getting worse. So we'll continue to throw this way until we do the right. I was just reading yesterday. If you see how much the Saudi Arabia oil company made in terms of profits just last two months, you'll be shocked. And we started this race together with Saudi Arabia. We started this race, we started Arabia, we discovered oil at almost the same time. Go and see what is happening in Dubai. Dubai doesn't have oil. Go and see what they are doing with tourism. Now, we have begging other countries. We are probably the only country in the world that exports uh, uh, crude oil in large quantity, but buy petroleum products. Are you also seeing what is happening in bunkering? You seen the waste? You see what the government is talking every day? Well, this is how many trillions and trillions are you then you continue to ask yourself, the same God that created these other countries, is this the same God that created us? And there's a big question that I need to ask. All right. Well, Chris K. Wendell, we have to go now. And unfortunately, we're out of time. We appreciate, I mean, your perspective this morning. It's been a very interesting conversation with you on Off the Press. Thank you very much. And Messi, we must insist that Kofi must cut us so. We must cut us so. <laughs> that place where he stay, you must let us know. Maybe we should just move him. We, we will thank find a way Wahala. to get, no, get, get it from him. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, All right, yes. thank you so much. I mean, Chris Kane Wando is Executive Director of African Governance and Leadership Initiative. Thank you so much once again. Kofi, when will right. you let us know? <laughs> I'm not telling, I'm not, you know, my, my, my father of blessed memory, uh, Mr. C.J. Battles, used to say, you know, when, whenever we go to, we have light that's going off and coming on. You know, he says, there's someone in Nepal, a staff, mm. you know, took his child to work with the child, saw the lever <laughs> and didn't know what it was, it was pressing like this. <laughs> or when we have constant light, you say, oh, maybe someone went, took his child, and the child mistakenly pressed it, that's why we have light. <laughs> oh. So I, I don't want them to remember that they forgot to turn my light off. <laughs> then, then it, let's leave it as it is. We'll what? be right back to talk some more right here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We have a discussion on waste management in Lagos State coming up next after this break. Please stay with us.